another YouTube video. This time it's all things traveling. I've had so many of you comment on my recent travels from Kenya to Mauritius to all the posts that I've been sharing on Instagram, TikTok and YouTube. And you have sent through so many questions like how to hack travels all the way to how to get content deals with hotels and when's the best time to book a flight. So in this video, I'm gonna break down everything that I know that I can share with you because we don't gatekeep, right? We want to make sure that everyone is their best self when holidaying, including some top bonus tips when it comes to luxury travel. Let's not mind my phone. I've got all the questions here, so let's kick off. So some things to know. I am very blessed that I have been traveling non-stop basically since the borders opened post pandemic lockdown. I think I've been to over 13 countries so far, including Mauritius, Kenya, Estonia, Portugal, Amsterdam, just to name a few. I know there's a tons more, Morocco, Belgium. So I like to have a good time. And I would say that most of my travels are on the more luxury, affluent business side. Now, that's not to say that they aren't budget, right? This is like traveling luxury on a budget. It's hacking the system. So here's a few top tips that you will need when you are also trying to live your best holiday life. The first is you have to research. Now, I think I spend most of my time researching holiday and holiday deals. What I found is rather than going to a main city, go to a neighboring city that might be a little bit more untapped. So an example being everyone goes to Lisbon, but go to Porto. Or everyone goes to Tallinn, but go to Tartu, right? A good example. When you are looking for travel dates, the first thing you should do is go on incognito mode. So the private mode. Searching on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is much cheaper than searching any other day of the week. And also flying out on a Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday is much cheaper than a weekend. You can hack the system. So you can fly out late on a Wednesday and then make it into a long weekend break, come back super early on a Monday if you want that long weekend break and then go straight to work. Whatever works for you now with work from home, there's a little bit more of flexibility there, right? The other thing to also consider is using the right sites to research. Now, what I mean by that is there's the top players, there's lastminute.com, there's Expedia, there's TripAdvisor. I personally use booking.com and I book all of my hotels through booking.com. They are definitely not giving me any goodies for me to say this. It's just, I found that if you stay loyal to one company, they'll give you discounts. So I'm able to save a lot because I'm the genius member on booking.com, which means that that's where I continuously book from. Now, a top tip that most people won't share with you, but again, we're not here to gatekeep. Everyone is living their best holiday life, is if you want to stay at a hotel in particular, one, go straight to their website and see if they have any deals or offers, or two, get in contact with them directly. Why that's important is because a lot of hotels actually pay neighboring sites to have a placement or and commission. So if you can, let's say, alleviate that middle person, you will be able to possibly negotiate a discount, you'll definitely get a better rate, and you'll probably have more loyalty points with the hotel brand itself. Now, I did this when I went to a business trip in Cornwall last year, is rather than booking through booking.com, I was getting a good rate, but I actually got in touch with them directly. Not only did I get a discount, but I got some credit for breakfast and for dinner, which in the greater scheme of things, saved me a lot more money. When you are thinking about going on holiday, I always think it's really important to also factor in the cost of transport. What I mean by that is, in London, there's various different airports, right? There's Luton, Stansted, Gatwick, Heathrow, and City, just to start with. City has convenient flights. Heathrow has a lot of long haul. Luton has really cheap flights. But for me to get to Luton, it's costing another 50 pounds, plus about an hour and a half of my time. But for me to get to Gatwick, it's a tenner and half an hour. And so it really is about... Yes, that flight might be a tenner, but actually in the greater scheme of things, it's a hundred pounds extra for you to get there and back. And so it's 120 pounds, but the flights in Gatwick might be 60, but it's gonna cost you 10 pounds to get there, 10 pounds to get back, so that's 80 and really it's a saving. So it's really about being quite cost effective with how you travel and thinking about the commuter costs. 
When you are also booking, try and book in advance or book super last minute. Now, what I mean by that is if you're booking in advance, you can get goodies, right? You can get bonus points, you can get loyalty points, you can get freebies, you can get goodies, maybe you can get an upgrade. And also things are much cheaper. But in the same way, if you are booking last minute, sometimes both aeroplanes and hotels need to fill their seats. And so there are top hacks, like going to the airport, not having anything booked and just seeing which aeroplane has a free seat and just taking the most cost-effective approach. Or when it comes to hotels, again, there'll be some hotels super last minute that are like, look, we just have a room that we need to get rid of. We're gonna give it the most basic price point possible. And we just want someone to stay. So this happened to me when I went to Manchester a couple of months ago. Other hotels prior to me going there, so I'm thinking like a week ahead or so, were about three to 500 pounds. Now for Manchester, that's really expensive. Those are like London prices, right? But I think there was a football match at the same time. I waited until the last, the very last minute for me to book a hotel. And I got a really cool, modern, central hotel for no more than 100 pounds. And it had everything included. And that was just because they had spare rooms going, they weren't able to make that booking and they wanted to get rid of it. And if anything, the hotel therefore is breaking even, even if they're not making that profit. I personally love booking flights and hotels separately. Now, some people might argue with that and that's completely fine, disagree and agree, whatever is, you know, suits you. I'm a big believer of booking your flight separately and then booking your hotels. What I tend to therefore do is I will book flights first, that might be months in advance, and then I'll figure out what hotels I wanna stay at. Now, bonus tip, especially as a content creator and influencer, if you're booking in advance, anywhere between three to nine months, I would say, go and get in touch with your accommodation of choice and see how you can work with them. I was really blessed that when I stayed in numerous hotels in Kenya, and I have a ton of videos on them, right? I was able to hack the hotel system. So I got in touch with them prior. I said, this is the reason why I'm coming down. This is what my value add is, what my offering is, what my proposal is, what I can do for you in return. And a couple of hotels actually came back and they were like, look, we've got space, we'd love to gift you, but in return for X, Y, Z deliverable. Awesome, we agreed on that via email beforehand. We also jumped on a talk call beforehand to get to know one another. And I arrived early to that hotel. I made sure I got all my content done and out of the way. And actually some of those videos have gone viral. So it really does work. Now, what I would say is when I did something very similar in Mauritius, I didn't have a blue tick. I didn't have the most, or I still don't have the greatest following, but I had a really engaged audience. I had a clear proposition. I knew what value I could add. I knew what they were looking for. And I was able to build a proposal for them in advance so that all they had to do was sign it off. So my point being is if you're going out for those gifted or collaboration elements or activations when it comes to hotels and flights or anything holiday related, don't make them do the work for you. Have everything in a media pack, including your stats, your testimonials, your evidence, all the way to the proposals that you wanna put forward, what a good collaboration looks like, some examples of what you've done in the past, as well as dates and what the clear ask is. And ultimately all they have to say is yes, no or not right now, and then you can finesse it and move on. Other things that I found really helpful when you are traveling and wanting to stay in something more four, four and five star is don't worry about staying just in the city. Sometimes the hotels that are in the city are more expensive because of location. But if you're staying in a four or five star, you're also wanting to actually spend time at the hotel themselves. And more times than not, they have transport which can take you to the local destinations or the activations of choice. And more often than not, they have transport that can take you to the local destinations or give you advice on how to get by, again, on a budget. And I keep saying the word budget because when you are traveling, it's really important to have a budget in mind. It's not a, oh, I've just got unlimited money. And if you do, that's great for you, but most of us don't. We're just gonna go and spend and splurge. It's like, this is how much I've allocated per day. How can I make the most of that day? And so when I stay in a four or five star, yes, I stay in something just outside of the city because if I'm investing in that experience, I really want to ensure that I'm investing in that experience, right? And so if I'm staying somewhere for five days, two days, pretty much, I will stay in the hotel and enjoy the hotel facilities and just get the most of my buck. Three days, I'll be out and about sightseeing and really taking advice from locals. 
And so on that note, don't book hotels that are just in the center. If you book hotels which are 10 to 30 minute walk, honestly, a walk's gonna do most people good, right? You get to sightsee a little bit more, but it will be that little bit more cost effective. And that's how you can hack hotels, especially when you're looking to stay luxury. My bonus tip there, especially if you're going for seven nights or more, is to hotel hop. Now, I remember when I shared this with my family and friends, they were like, you're crazy. Who hotel hops? And I was like, that's something I really enjoy doing. And for me, that's one way in which I can see other parts of the island or the city or the town or the country that I'm in. It's one way that I can learn about the culture. It's another way that I can test out different food and drinks from different sites. I can also get to know locals a little bit more and also just enjoy different hotel experiences. So if I'm staying in a place for seven days, I probably will have two different hotels that I stay at, 14 days or more, probably three or four. And again, I try and use them in different parts of the island so that I can really enjoy where I am and focus on it and prioritize it for those days and then go hop somewhere else. So I did this in Rhodes. In Rhodes, I stayed north of the island, so Old Town for two nights. I then went to the east for, I think about three nights. And then I went to the south for about three nights. But during that time, not only was I able to hire a car to get from one to the other destination, I was able to really focus on that one area and see it, eat it as much as I could possibly. And then equally learn about the different mini cultures that exist within the same island because people are so different where you go. And so for me, that was a great way to experience it. And now I feel like, you know what, I've done roads. I don't necessarily need to go back to roads, but that's one way to really experience where you are. I did the same thing with Mauritius. Mauritius is amazing. It's one of my most favorite places to go. I'd absolutely recommend it if you can do so. And so in Mauritius, I stayed in four different hotels, worked with a really great tour advisor, which I've put down in the description, which basically covered most of the north, east and west area of Mauritius. So if I was to go back, I really only have the south to do. And much of that is hiking. And so that would be the experience in itself. It's funny, right? You learn things like Excel and you're like, when's Excel ever gonna come into play in your day-to-day -day life? I honestly use a spreadsheet every time I go traveling. And when I went to Greece, I actually saved myself 750 pounds just by using a spreadsheet and changing the times and the dates of not only the flights, but the hotels. So the first thing when it came to flights was I was using my British Airways American Express premier card. So again, the link is in the description if you want a referral. This is absolutely not financial advice. And if you are in debt or and if you can't look after your credit, please don't take out a card. I feel like I just need to give that caveat, but fundamentally a British Airways American Express is a credit card of some kind. But as a business owner, what I do is I tend to spend on that, rack up the Avios points and unlock my two for one voucher, pay it off with my business account. And that way it's a win-win for everyone, especially for me. Now, again, I don't recommend it if you're not great with money, if you're not able to manage your funds. But for me, as someone who is both a keen traveler and a business person, I think it's definitely a great route to go down. And so once I was able to unlock my flights for Greece, as an example, there were set flights that I can go on. And so I had 10 days booked. During that time, I then did my research. I listed six different hotels that I wanted to stay in, knowing that I'd only pick three. I went on social engine sites like Google, as well as Instagram, as well as TikTok to really see the locations that I'd be staying in, get other people's firsthand reviews, and also get a sense of the scenery because just because something looks really good online doesn't mean it's nice offline, right? And then once I limited it to the three hotels that I was really keen on, I then just played around with the dates. And I remember shifting my dates to something along the lines of two, three, three, in terms of staying at one hotel for two nights, the other for three nights, the next for three nights, versus three, two, three, as an example. And that saved me 750 pounds just because you were able to hack the days that you were staying. So it turns out that if you stay somewhere Friday to a Sunday, it's more expensive than if you stay there Saturday to a Monday. And so if you're able to just rearrange your hotels in that way, 
that's a massive saving that you can spend on other things. But also, I guess these are the kind of things that people don't tell you when you're trying to travel. And it's also when spreadsheets come in really useful. So thank you to all of my teachers who taught me how to use a spreadsheet because this is how you can use it in real life. And the last top tip before I go into the ask me anything questions that people have sent is think about using discount codes. And it's funny because there's a lot of discount codes actually available on mobile sites compared to desktop sites. So I use a plugin, I think it's called Honey, where you just plug it into your Google extension and it finds discount codes for you when you're booking on sites. Sorry, I use booking.com and that's my chosen site because I've worked my way up for the points. And so I will check the prices on desktop and on the mobile and turns on mobile apps, they're always a little bit more of a saving. And so then you just heart it, you book it, and what I found in terms of bonus tips, right, is one, book hotels where you can cancel at least the day before because you don't know what's happening in the world. Two is take out insurance when and if you can. That's just going to save you a headache if anything goes wrong. And three, and I think most important, don't cheap out on hotels. And what I mean by that is safety and security are really important right so if it's costing you let's say a tenner which is the difference but it's taking you three miles out of where you need to be and it's in a secluded place and it feels a little bit unsafe or you're not used to staying in hostels but actually the hotel is a tenner more but it's closer to where you need to be I think we really need to prioritize our safety versus splurging and so for me I really think about not only checking the reviews but I also think about is this close to transport links? Is this somewhere where I feel safe? What is around this hotel in case I wanna go out for a walk? Sometimes I get in touch with them and ask them these questions, but also it's really therefore important to read the reviews to make sure that you're not out of your way. And I only say that because I've stayed in some hotels which have not been that great. So I remember when I was studying abroad, I stayed in this hotel south of Italy and it looked great online. But when we got there, it literally looked like it used to be a hospital that was then converted into a hotel. Everything was shared. It didn't really have locks in the rooms and it just felt pretty unsafe. And luckily I was with someone, but I realized at that point, it's like, even if it's a tenner or like 15 pounds more, work hard for that extra bit of money, have it in your budget and in your savings, but also invest in your safety and security because that's really important when it comes to traveling. I've had some questions come through. Um, so ask me anything. And I thought this is a really good time at the back of this kind of travel hack video to answer those. So the first question is, if you win the lottery tomorrow, what are, if you win the lottery tomorrow, where are you traveling to first? Um, it's such a great question. If I win the lottery tomorrow, where am I going first? I'd love to go back to Pakistan. I haven't been for a few years. I also really want to do South America. And so I probably want to book a flight there, but I've just had some friends move over to, move over to Singapore and Singapore is so expensive. So I think if I won the lottery, I'd probably book a flight to Singapore and stay in like a really nice hotel and just enjoy my life. I watched a documentary once where it had the Marina Bay uh, Hotel in Singapore, which is like mega luxury and apparently you never have to leave. And since then I'm like, right, one day I'd love to stay there. So if you are listening, Marina, babe, I'm ready. What's your favorite aspect about traveling? I love to travel because I feel like it teaches you a lot more about yourself as well as other cultures. So traveling has taught me discipline. It's taught me budgeting. It's taught me to prioritize myself in terms of health, wellness, and benefiting my recovery of all, all kinds. But also it's helped me to learn that the world is greater than honestly you are. And there's so much else going on that you should be aware of. Um, it's helped me to unlock my knowledge of different cultures, languages, customs. And especially because I have quite a customer and client facing role, it means I just have a bit more education when it comes to different customs. So a good example is when I went to Japan a few years ago, which again is epic and I'd recommend everyone to go. Their culture and way of doing things is very different to being in England. And so now when I am able to have business conversations or and real life conversations with East Asians, I'm a lot more respectful and understanding and empathizing because I've been there, I've traveled, I've understood. 
Um, and so I think it's one great for negotiation, two for knowledge sharing, and three for for getting things you know crossed over the line, which is is important if you are in the world of work. What are some of your favorite travel destinations? So I've already mentioned Mauritius. I've mentioned Kenya. I definitely recommend them. I am really blessed that I've done a lot of Asia and I love Asia so much. So Malaysia is great. It's a great coming together of East meets West. Penang and Langkawi, again, Malaysian territory. Penang is great for food. Langkawi is great for beaches. I did Vietnam and Cambodia before it was super trendy. Cambodia, Siem Reap, especially Angkor Wat is stunning. And there's so much history there and you get to go in a little tuk-tuk. People are super friendly. Everything's within walking distance. And thankfully it's not super commercialized. So they're still very rich in their kind of true essence of, of history and culture. Vietnam also, um, I went to Ho Chi Minh, which was great. Stayed in a really basic hotel and I stayed in the hotel there, which was quite basic because when I don't stay in like a five star, I stay in like a three star. And the reason for that is because it encourages me to go out. Now that might sound really pretentious the way I've said that. And I don't mean for it to be like that. I just mean different holidays have different motivations, right? So if I'm going for a city break, that means that I'm gonna stay in something a little bit less nicer, but more safer, more central, but less splurge so that I can encourage myself to actually go and see the city and be out and about, which is really important. Whereas if I'm going on like a wellness or luxury health retreat, which means that I'm investing in my well-being, the idea is that you want to go and basically sit in that hotel, sit by the beach and have everything catered for you. And you don't necessarily have to move because that's what I need to do to switch off, especially as a business owner. And so you have to define the motive for the holiday, what you hope to get out of the experience and prioritize. Is it a city break? Is it a, a kind of culture break? Or is it more of a... I need this to boost up my confidence and to look after myself break, which is slightly different. So yeah, so Ho Chi Minh stayed in, you know, kind of a really central location, three star, very basic, but really cool. Encouraged me to go out and wander quite a bit, which was amazing. And then I had some leftover money, which I then invested in excursion. So you went to go see the villages in the waters. And that taught me so much about everything from the privilege that you have growing up in the UK with your healthcare system, to the use of technology, to just the fact that I have shelter and structure. And I remember coming back from that holiday, being like quite more aware of your surroundings, but also a lot more, a lot more grateful for having shelter, for having food, for having water, for having healthcare, for having everything like sanitary products, small things that you really take for granted. And I think it changed the way that I do things in my day to day as well. So similarly, when I went to Kenya, I had the most amazing time on safari. Like it changed my life. And zebras are probably my spirit animal, right? But I remember going and seeing animals in nature and being like, oh, these animals are not only real because you see them on the TV, but you've never really seen them in real life. But this is their natural habitat. How am I helping or hindering this process? And I remember coming back from Kenya, especially Masai Mara Safari and being like, hey, I need to be considering what I wear, what I do, what I'm eating, where I'm going, how I'm really living a day-to-day -day life of sustainability to help the ecosystem and the environment around me versus just expecting recycled plastic bottles or you know, not buying a 5P plastic bag to save the planet. It's a lot more than that. Like these are great starting points, but what are you doing in your day-to-day? Are you a city traveler or a nature explorer? I like a little bit of everything. I like a really good nature hike. But at the same time, I love a little bit of the city. When I went to Marrakesh, I stayed in a local Riyadh, right in the center of town. It was about a 15 minute walk to the old town square. And though I really enjoyed Marrakesh, I think what I enjoyed a lot more than the city was the Imlil Mountains. And so that was the most pleasurable hike, or one of the most pleasurable hikes I've been on. It was quiet, it was quaint, it was guided by a local. It was around nature. I didn't have any Wi-Fi on my phone. I didn't have any data, which was great. I wasn't doing it for content. You were really just enjoying yourself in that moment. And especially if you're thinking of doing content when you're traveling, a top tip of mine is to get content out of the way or and to schedule timings for content and also schedule timings without content and without any technology. Because what tends to happen is you will tend to burn out really quickly because all you're trying to do is capture every single moment. 
and not actually enjoy what you're doing there. Have you ever flown first class? Great question. I have not yet flown first class long haul. Short haul I have, but that doesn't really count because all the planes are basically the same. So you don't really get like an extra, you know, goodie bag or an upgrade of any kind. I have flown business, which is amazing. And then next year in 2024, I'm going to the Maldives for a big campaign and I fly business. So super exciting. What I would say, and this goes back to my point earlier, actually, about the British Airways Avios, is do not, my top tip, do not waste, and I literally use the word waste, waste your Avios points on short haul business class flights. They're definitely not worth it. The lounge might be worth it but the experience is not anything extra or special. And also a lot of short haul flights now are very much basic budget airline flights. And so for the price that you're paying, it's not really worth the experience. So rack up as many loyalty points as you can, even if that takes you five, 10 years, like this still didn't happen overnight, right? This this took me like five years to get my first business class like um, accumulated really go all out on that one great experience long haul so you get to enjoy it versus smaller short haul ones which really do not make a difference do you prefer a window seat or an aisle seat on a plane i would prefer probably a little bit more of an aisle i like a bit of space a window if the aisle doesn't exist i definitely don't like a middle seat a middle seat is like so claustrophobic and i also like to sit with my legs up or and sleep on the plane or and you know eat all the food available and so I find that it's really difficult to do that right in the middle would you rather go on a safari have a city break or visit a tropical island after going on a safari I think everyone if you can should go on a safari it absolutely changes your life but after that and I've done it once which is awesome given how busy and stressful my day job is I love a tropical island I love just to go and sit by the beach and um, I've recently learned how to swim I mean, I knew how to swim when I was younger, but then due to many reasons, I stopped swimming. So I, I found my confidence again in swimming. And so it's funny because I've been to a lot of beach holidays, but not actually gone into the sea. So when I went to Greece, when I went to Rhodes, it was one of the first times in years that I've actually gone into the sea and swam in the sea and been healed by the seawater. And it changed everything that I know about holidaying so far. So I would say definitely if it's a legit holiday, like a hack holiday, a luxury holiday, a holiday where I need to just recover, I will go sit by a beach. If it's a short city break, I will go to somewhere European. I've been to Lithuania a few years ago. Very cool, completely untapped, definitely worth uh, the journey. I've been to Estonia last year. So one of my best friends was actually doing a project out there and she invited me to Estonia and I was like, I've never even heard of it. I don't know where it is. Turns out it's a big deal. Skype and Wise were founded in Estonia, right? And so when I landed, I went to Tartu, which was the first university town, really quiet, really, really like small, not a lot to do. Nice for food, but apart from a little bit of historical sightseeing or being a student, not really somewhere that you stay more than three days. They have a great botanical garden and like a nice riverside walk. But really three days is probably enough. But Tallinn was really cool. Tallinn has a lot of mixture of architecture, history. It's super advanced in terms of technology and digital age. They even had ro robots like cleaning the streets. Everything was contactless. They had great food. And, you know, I, I have a lot of posts around, uh, around kind of Tallinn, Estonia, which I'll put in the description. But I think if you have, if you have time and you're down for a city break, I'd recommend going to some untapped destinations and really investing investing your currency in the in the local economy and supporting kind of the local established businesses and I guess that's one thing I didn't share is I understand how difficult it is to launch and, and scale a little small business so where I can now I specifically try and invest in boutique hotels or family-owned hotels and businesses tour guides excursions restaurants and those that aren't with big chains because those that aren't a part of a big chain because I think that way you can actually invest in the talent of tomorrow I think your money is going to be even more impactful for the people that are trying to scale upwards um, and especially when you have a public profile like I do now it just by giving them a little bit of not only your money but the social awareness it can help boost the brand which for you might not be life-changing but for them it might be the difference between 
kind of quitting and working. And I think that's really important, especially when you think about business sentiment. What movie has inspired a previous trip of yours? So I wouldn't necessarily say inspired it, but I know when Eat, Pray, Love came out, that was a big deal, right? Such a great movie. And she went on this awakening in Italy and just had a great time. And I remember it during university when I had the opportunity for a study abroad year, I think that movie probably inspired my study abroad in Italy. And I was like, hey, Julia Roberts can go and have a big awakening. I think I can too. And I was like, oh, I've, I've always wanted to go to Italy. I never went there. Study abroad was the best experience of my life. And if you can do it, I definitely recommend it. And we can talk about study abroad for days. And I think I will be doing a YouTube video on that very soon because I've had so many people asking about my study abroad experience. But I would most definitely say that the Eat, Pray, Love movie probably subconsciously sponsored my trip to Italy. And I was like, hey, I can live a life of pizza, pasta and coffee and become a much kind of, you know, uh, La Vita Bella type person. And I would say that that experience was not only great and fundamental in terms of building my foundations, but it just reminds you that people live and breathe so differently and that wherever you are in the world, things are a lot more chilled out. So I do try and tap back into my Italian whenever I'm having a really stressful moment. Cause I'm like, hey, you know what? Nothing is that deep. And I was constantly told just to go with the flow and to take it easy and to be like, you know what? Every, I actually have a fridge magnet that says something along, along the lines of no piuvo per sempre, which basically means it doesn't always rain. So the point being is, I think when I lived in Italy, it really taught me like for every dark cloud, the sun will come up. And it times when it's raining, it does stop and you see a rainbow. And so I try and use that mentality in my everyday life. So when I'm struggling or when things are really tiring or when I have social anxiety or when things are just super pressureful, I tap back into my 21 year old self and say, what would 21 year old self Sonia do? And actually what she would do is she'd leave everything. She'd go get a coffee and cake. She'd go for a walk. She'd look at the sky and be like, you know what, life is beautiful. And she would just go with the flow. And on that note, hopefully this has been somewhat interesting. Again, a lot of my YouTube videos are really based on the feedback that I'm getting from all of you all. So if there's anything that you want me to touch on, talk about uh, or share in terms of tip tricks and, and you know hacks that I have, let me know. Everything I've shared is in the description. Like, share and subscribe. And then I'll see you very soon.